long? You think three games, four games? What's the over and under? The over and under? <laughs> Early. Yeah. The first time he doesn't get a pass thrown his way. The puck gets on. And does that surprise you as another penalty marker is Yeah, thrown? it does. You're right in that area. Same with Wes Cates, too, for that matter. Yeah, Wes Cates, Darian Durant, for sure. You know, maybe even a Weston Dressler if there's if it's deep enough over there. But they're right in that Major area. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Winnipeg, number 20. A 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. Automatic first down. See, and this stuff is going on, too. So this is, this is part of it. And this has got to be a consideration for Ken Miller because... You know the Bombers are frustrated. You know about the rivalry. They're going to play to the echo of the whistle now. They're going to start to do some things like that where Shabazz comes in. Now, if, if you get hit like that, you roll on the quarterback's knee and you lose him. You know, this is right in that area. And I say area because of the time. I mean, most, yep. quarter, most coaches won't want to make the move until inside of 10 minutes, but you know, that would almost be, this probably be the last series for Darren Durant. at the Saskatchewan bench. I think at this point in the game, you still have to run your offense. It's 12-28. You still have to run the regular offense, so you're, you're going to continue to use the passing game, but you probably run on first down primarily. But if they run a double reverse and have them throw off it to the end zone again, it might start World War III. <laughs> it's just me. I don't think Ken Miller will call that play. It worked well the first time. Second and ten. Here comes the pressure. And Durant. Got to get away. Oh, God! Is that picked off? Gary Doggett's got it. An interception. Looks like Durant tried to throw it away. And Doggett, hands were too good. Right with the hammer. He just stabbed that football. Durant was throwing it out of bounds. And he just didn't, but he was going to throw it out of bounds. He might as well Make throw sure. it in a roll for, Oh, you know what? Jerron Walker was in behind him. He was caught. He was lost from our eye line in the bomber bench. And it looked like maybe Durant tried to get it to Walker. That's some kind of play by Derek Dockett. And the Bombers sprinted out on the field. They tried to get Saskatchewan. See if he was Before the bounds. defense had even arrived. And maybe to make sure that the interception stands. Mm -hmm. But play wasn't blown in, and the Bombers offense sprinted out there, and they tried to catch. They tried to catch Saskatchewan without their defense being ready. play in and we're ready to go that was another pass batted down at the line and it falls incomplete as Stevie Beggs has words with left tackle Steve Morley Morley came out after that play and put a little hit on Stevie Beggs that he didn't like this is a point in the game when you have the big lead like Saskatchewan does. You want to make sure you're protecting yourself at all times. And you don't really stop playing or stop being prepared for a hit from any angle until the Bombers are back in the huddle almost. Doesn't get any easier for Winnipeg. They're in Montreal next Sunday. Rough Riders getting set for back-to-back -back against Edmonton. Ben Reed and John Chick there. And what a home and home series John Chick has had against these Blue Bombers. Boy, is he ever! It's not just, and it's not just these two games. It's it's the first two back. You put those three game totals together. It four tackles, two sacks on Labor Day, and that added to his total. Fred Reed nowhere to go in the backfield. He's the hottest rush end right now in the CFL. And Alexis Serna gets sent on to. Try and end the 35 points run for Saskatchewan. And they're trying from 48 yards out. Wind is at their back. They elected not to try one in the second quarter. Into the wind from that distance. He had plenty of leg. And the Bombers get 
three. Last nine here at home, and if they could have come out and played well and won this game, it was a, a run that they could really have started, get that home crowd excited, and this is just falling on your face like this at home really backfires on them. Now the Bombers worried about selling tickets. Sort of kicks deep. Runs dead from his two. And the newcomer to the Bombers, Nick Kordick. Downfield to get the special team tackle. Gary Durant's afternoon's done. As he takes off the pads, he'll watch Stephen Giles finish up. Darian Durant is now 10 and 4 as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders starter. With 11 minutes left in the game, I'm awarding the win to Saskatchewan. I believe this is the earliest the decision desk has gone to work this yes. year. Stephen Giles gets a chance to go in and take some snaps. With flags flying, Ford up close to the 25. Major foul, face mask, Winnipeg, number 20. 15 yards from the end of the play, automatic first down. Well, Sadiq Shabazz has been drawing a lot of cloth here in the second half you can tell he is frustrated because I know a lot of the hype and moving him back to linebacker the Bombers and their fans were pretty excited about that they thought that this was going to be a move that really made a good defense even better he's drawn a few penalties now for late hits and not a face mask Neil McKinley off and Pierre-Luc Labbe comes in at middle linebacker have had four straight first down penalty. Stu Ford churning for more. Stu Ford's been a productive guy when he yeah. gets the opportunity. He said he's had to work more on pass protection and that end of it, but it's a guy who's moved the ball and uh, had a spectacular game against the BC Lions. Oh, yeah, and for a guy who's 5'11", 195, I mean, under 200 pounds, he plays big. He's, he is productive, and he's also, you know, he's also can contribute on the teams, when the, whether it be kick return, punt return team. Pretty good there, too. Stephen Giles and I don't you know I know Bomber fans are wondering about is this rubbing it in to have Stephen Giles throwing it down the field like this I, I don't think so at all I think you get your backup quarterback in there and there's the layered routes coming off the line of scrimmage with Walker coming across the middle you get your backups in there and your backup quarterback you want him to take some good reps and try and get better himself and run the offense Heard Ken Miller's comments about Darian Durant, and uh, he usually adds to that he is he has full confidence in number nine. Mm -hmm. They're still developing him as well. Passed out first contact. Game tackled at the 32. That's a good point, Chris, because I, you know, in my discussions with Ken Miller, he talked about both quarterbacks, Stephen Giles, and their development. Darian Durant told me that. You know, he thinks that we'll be watching Darian Durant and Stephen Giles for a long, long time in the CFL. I mean, he said, you know, far beyond when I'm coaching, you're going to watch these two players that will establish themselves, continue to develop. you got to give full credit to Ken Miller for having the patience. You know, he changed his philosophy this year from last a little bit, too. Gave them a chance to go in there and learn from some mistakes and stay in there a little longer. forward to the 25 yard line he'll be a yard short of a first down you know and, and when you consider how Ken Miller was juggling quarterbacks a little bit last year and you know in fairness to Ken Miller I'm not so sure that the decision to bring Michael Bishop and kind of parachute him into the situation last year was really Ken Miller's decision I think that decision was made elsewhere and when when that happened Ken Miller managed it he did his best with it 
but that was not his choice. And he, he comes in now, and now he's with Steven Giles and Darian Durant. He is allowing them to learn from mistakes, and boy, are they reaping the benefits of that. Luka Kanji attempting his fifth of the night on third and one. And Kanji fattens up his average. Tonight's game story brought to you by Molson Canadian. This is our beer. You know, one of the strong suits of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers all year has been that giveaway-takeaway ratio, and they've been pretty good at it, but not, not this one. This is a game won by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on those turnovers and then points off them. They've capitalized. West Cates played very well again. Play by James Patrick. There is a flag on the field. 45 points against a bomber team that uh, had been pretty stingy, allowing about half that per game all season, or at least for the first half. And I'm going to bring something up, and I'm going to preface it by saying that I am not this man's agent. Illegal block, Winnipeg, number 24, 10 yard penalty, first down. And I know there are a lot of people let's say that he has done too many things to get another chance i don't know why but we mentioned casey printers having a little fun early on but when you look at the quarterback situation in winnipeg is he not a better option i, I can't argue that i, I just and, and i know they took a look at him early in the process and decided not to go that direction I've, I've in the past talked to Casey Printer since then in training camp. He, he understands and he's looking for that next chance. If his name was in the discussion before Michael Bishop was called, that discussion was very short. Bishop yeah. considered the best option. And after six games, his record will be two and four. And a guy who was the outstanding player in 2004 I guess I'm just, waiting by the phone yeah I guess I'm just a little confused in some ways I mean there are leagues and Offside. games where Saskatchewan number 98 five yard penalty remain first down Joe Sykes called offside there are there are leagues where convicted felons who serve their time get second chances here's a former most outstanding player in the Canadian Football League sitting by his phone staying in shape throwing the football is he not a better option than what the bombers have right now that's I, a little surprise pressure on randall Holman. oh they got it yeah, sales five yards past the intended target robbie bryant and i preface that because i i know there are people that think that i'm sort of casey printer's buddy so i keep bringing him up because of that reason that's not the case at all i just we all know what he was capable of years and maybe he has lost it but does Mike Kelly, is it hurt him to bring him into the practice roster even? Let him practice for a couple weeks. If he's a bad teammate, you cut him, no problem. It's done. Problem is, he wasn't in anybody's camp, and I don't know if you can parachute anybody in and solve a problem. Look at Omar Morgan. And Morgan down to the one-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle there by Glenn January. But that one was easy, and Morgan has interceptions in back-to-back -back weeks. And I would, yeah, I would suggest that the...